With the end of DreamHack 2017, it's safe to say that Paladins is bigger than ever. The quick-shooting, high-flying, uncomfortably attractive elf assassin MMO of your dreams is here to stay, and we are here to tell you some things about it that you might not have known. Hi, I'm Kyle Stover with The Leaderboard, and we are here to count down seven facts about Paladins. This free-to-play shooter is one of the most popular games on Steam, so there's a lot to cover. Number 1. Studio Digest Paladins is a competitive team-based first-person shooter that was developed by production company hi Res Studios. Its closed beta testing began in November of 2015, with the beta opening up on Steam in September of 2016. hi Res Studios is an international production company with branches in Atlanta, Georgia, Shenzhen, China, and Brighton, UK. Their most popular current titles besides Paladins are Smite and Hand of Gods. They also developed Tribes Ascend back in 20. 2012, and Global Agenda, a cyberpunk massive multiplayer shooter back in 2010. hi Res prides themselves on the fact that all of their games they release are high quality, but also free to play. To quote their website, quote, We make free to play games that our fans want to play. More importantly, we make free to play games that we want to play. End quote. In addition to the free to play motto, hi Res develops games using four official rules. Quote, number one, trust your fans and your data. Number two, no idea is too dumb to try. Three, iterate constantly and keep your game fresh. And number four, there is no rule number four. No, I mean, really, that's actually rule number four. It's on their official website and everything. Paladins itself was developed by the Georgia Studio, which is run by COO Todd Harris. Number 2. What's in a genre? Paladins is most often described as a first-person shooter, but the more correct term is a hero shooter. The term was first coined in 2014 during Gearbox's marketing campaign for their hero shooter, Battleborn. The rise of hero shooters is partially due to the explosive popularity of MOBAs, or multiplayer online battle arena games. You know, games like Dota and League of Legends, you may have heard of them. Now I know what you're thinking, what exactly differentiates MOBAs from hero shooters? Well, first and foremost, it ditches the top-down viewpoint in favor of a first or closely third-person perspective. This places an emphasis on the shooting, and secondly, to quote Gearbox chief Randy Pitchford, quote, For us, the focus is on the champions, the playable characters, and the idea that there is a lot of them, and you can choose between them and mix them up. The hero shooter subgenre probably began with the infinitely influential Team Fortress classic back in 1999, and was popularized even further by its sequel, Team Fortress 2, back in 2007. That's right, back in 2007. It has gone on to become one of the most enduringly popular subgenres for competitive gaming. Other hero shooters include Paragon, the unfortunately cancelled Battle Cry, the unfortunately died very soon after its release, Battle Born, that Ghost in the Shell game that you didn't actually play, Evolve, which unfortunately died and then came back, and of course, Paladins. Number 3. Creation and development. Development began in 2012 on the game that would become Paladins, and at that point it was called Arum. It was originally intended to be a fantasy-based MMO similar to hi Studio's earlier game Global Agenda. According to hi COO Todd Harris, the original idea with Arum was to essentially streamline Global Agenda. According to him, the lesson that hi learned from Global Agenda was that, quote, it had too many features and game modes for us to be able to maintain enough depth into each one, end quote. Aram was much more cartoony than what Paladins eventually turned into, believe it or not. If you look at the alpha footage that COO Todd Harris put online, it has a really cool, almost Borderlands-esque cell shaded going on with its own cartoon twist. There are a lot of early character design changes, too. Pip, our favorite Fennec Fox, was originally this odd blue fantasy version of who he became, and Droxus was originally a lot less Metal Diablo and a little bit more Cyborg Ninja, and Cassie originally wore mm, less. Also, her bird Ziggs was originally a mecha bird. These are all probably handovers from when Aram was originally more in line with the glorious cyberpunk world of Global Agenda. But it's still odd and cool to see your favorite hero so different. At least their art style evolved beyond what this hacked earlier image of Fernando and Cassie look like. Yikes. Number four, the controversy about that you know, other hero shooter. 
It's very difficult to talk about paladins without mentioning the big glasses-wearing gorilla in the room, so I'm going to get it out of the way here in this section so we can move on to what's really cool about paladins, okay? Upon the release of its announcement trailer, the game media immediately drew comparisons to Blizzard's monstrously popular first-person shooter, Overwatch. Overwatch did beat Paladins to the punch on release, with Blizzard's game coming out on May 26th of 2016, while Paladins released their open beta on September 16th of the same year. This drew a lot of claims of Paladins simply being an Overwatch clone and trying to capitalize on its popularity. That being said, it's impossible to completely build a working game in four months, much less one as well polished as Paladins was. It's also worth mentioning that Paladins began its closed beta testing on November 17th of 2015 before Overwatch's release. According to Todd Harris, when Overwatch was announced, quote, we were shocked and not sure what direction to take. We were already so far along with Paladins, but we didn't want to compete directly against Blizzard. After the Overwatch announcement, Hi-Rez tried some other directions to take Paladins, but soon realized due to community feedback that it was best to just stick to their guns and move forward with the game that they had been developing and that the closed beta community had already fallen in love with. While it's hard to deny the visual resemblance between the games, Harris points out that there are a lot of similarities between Overwatch and Hi-Rez's previous game, Global Agenda, a game that predates both by about seven years. Game development is an iterative process, he said. The game that deserves the most credit for the genre is TF2. And I swear that is the last I will mention Overwatch, I promise you. We did 107 facts and a couple of shorts on that, and we can go to those videos to talk about that, but we're here to talk about what you're here to see, and that is... Paladins. Number 5. Lore. One of the strangest things about Paladins is that while its setting and characters are just bursting with personality, the game is strangely low on lore. Hi-Rez is obviously focusing on balance and gameplay and has promised a more fleshed out story for their world, but so far fans have been cobbling together the scraps. Here's what we know so far. Paladins takes place in the fantasy world of Crosswind Hold. Characters have traveled from all across the realm to do battle here and come from many different races, cultures, and far-flung areas of the world. Fernando, for instance, is from a place called Sunspire. The name is probably what inspired his amazing flamethrower sword, and also a name that I like to personally think is Spanish for not Spain. I don't know, I took German in high school. In addition to the human characters, we also have dwarves, elves, a dragon with a jetpack, a goblin who argues with his own invention, a woman made out of stone, a fae, tree people, giant turtles, witches, and the most ludicrously adorable fox with a gun you've ever seen. Man, I do really like Pip. I don't know what it is, but there's just something I like about Pip. We can comment on that later. So why are all these people in the same place? Honestly, we don't know. High res has been very upfront that they are prioritizing gameplay, which is a great idea in, you know, a game. Most of the lore that's been released can be found through the Paladin's wiki, and so if you're interested in a certain character, you can definitely read up on them there, but be aware it can be a little frustrating, especially when your favorite character still has a story that's, quote, coming soon. Here's to hoping that high res works on some of that lore when the game comes out of early access. Like we said, the world is super colorful and very interesting. We want to know more and we can't wait to see what they come up with, but we'll have to be patient for that. Number six, heroes and their roles. Now to get into some facts that most of you hardcore players already know, here are heroes and their roles. There are currently 28 champions available to play in Paladins, split into four classes, frontline, damage, support, and flank. Of these 28, eight are available as free to play right off the bat, and the other 20 can be purchased with in-game loot, or if you're less patient, with your real money in the Founders Pack. As many of you may know, purchasing the Founders Pack not only unlocks all the playable characters in the game, but also gives you access to all future Future champions, which is no small thing considering that Paladins is still in early access and you can rest assured that there are plenty more champions to come before the game comes out. Also, speaking of worth it, did you know that exclusive skins and items can also be unlocked by linking your social media accounts to the Paladins official page? It's true. You can link your Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Steam, and Twitch, and each of these will earn you an exclusive reward for each account linked. And you can get a horse. Get the horse, it's free! The current roster of Paladins Champions is split into four different distinct groups. Games can only be one if teammates work together and piece their classes together well, and they work pretty much how you'd expect. The front line is your tank and earn points for holding the objective, while damage heroes score points for kills, etc, etc. Flank is your front line, damage score points for kills, support champions heal and provide buffs, and flank champions are there 
to disrupt the enemy team's strategy as much as possible. It all sounds pretty straightforward until you start to wonder about these card things that people keep harping about. Number 7. The Card System in Competitive Play Maybe the most striking thing about Paladins in comparison to other hero shooters is its unique card system. Cards are unique buffs and abilities that players can equip to their champion in a loadout to better tailor them to their play experience. Paladins has literally hundreds of cards that players can equip, leading to basically any loadout imaginable. The lower tier cards can't do much of course, but if you get a legendary card or two, you can seriously affect how your champion will play on the field, and seriously throw a wrench in the plans of your enemies. All players start with a default loadout of the same 5 cards per champion, and additional cards can be obtained through Radiant Chests, and through crafting with Essence, which itself is obtained through chests, gameplay, and competing weekly quests. Essentially, you counter before you begin play, and that's a really unique idea. It's about building the best loadout possible, tailoring a champion to your playstyle, and trying to guess how your opponents will play before they're even on the map. There are even websites like paladinsdeck.com in which players can share their preferred loadouts and talk about what they think works best with whom. It's like building a card deck, but also having to deal with aiming. It's a really cool system and a really nice break from the counter with a different hero gameplay that's more common in certain other hero shooters, which will not be named here. It's a different kind of tactic, which is why Paladins has proven to be popular for competitive play. And while, quote, lore might not be super high on high res's to-do list, nurturing a bustling esports community certainly is. At DreamHacks Valencia 2017, Paladins made history by hosting the first ever esports competition for players competing on different consoles. That's right, players went head-to-head -head on PCs, Xbox Ones, and PlayStation 4s, all to get that coveted $100,000 prize. Harris explained, quote, While Paladins is new on console, we thought it was important to reward our early competitive players with a unique and fun event. As far as we know, no major multiplayer shooter has ever had their best players from both PS4 and Xbox One play one another in this type of venue. We can finally settle the blue versus green debate once and for all, end quote. Spoilers of those of you who missed it, Xbox One, get it? Because it's the Xbox One, but they also won the competition. Ah, ah. Anyway, as of July 16th, 2017, hi -Res announced the Paladins Global Series. Running for 10 months is a bracket of the best Paladins players from all over the world, and we mean literally from everywhere. During the last month, the top 8 teams, one for each continent, will compete to see who will go home with a $350,000 cash prize, as well as in-game crystal prizes. The Global Series is only open to PC players as of right now, but is a pretty big deal. With a cash prize that size, it is nothing to scoff at. So it's safe to say that hi -Rez is definitely committing to their competitive scene in a way that we have not seen from many other developers. Winning hundreds of thousands of dollars for a game that I didn't even have to pay for in the first place? Count me in. Well, there you have it. That's it for our seven facts about Paladins. And as we said, the game is still in beta, and hi -Rez is highly receptive to comments and critiques. What kinds of new champions would you like to see? What do you think the lore is going to shape up to be? Who are you rooting for in the global series? Comment below and let us know. Remember to hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.